I will send out email, like a group email for the whole, everybody in the community, friends, friends and family of the church about the installation service, which is Sunday, August 21st. That Sunday, in two weeks, we will have a regular ser service in the morning, then the installation service that is held uh, together with the Presbytery of South Cafe at four o'clock. So session and people getting starting to get ready and I will send out uh, invitations so there's no confusion. I meant, perhaps, yeah. Let me just mention that there will be a reception after. There will be reception afterwards. Yes. Downstairs. Yes. Okay. Um, then I met um, Pastor Eric Larson and his wife Debbie this past Friday. We had a nice talk over coffee, and he's a pastor of the Heavens Mountain Baptist Church, and he their church is doing a lot to support the community and we support one another. And he asked me to spread the word about this uh, fourth annual wire teller benefit reserve contest. I think many of you know the young man who got in an accident a couple of 20 couple of years ago when he was 17, suffered a major injury and uh, the community, this is not uh, the Baptist Church, but there's another organization doing hope sponsoring this benefit uh, dessert contest. So I will have a copy of this up here, and but there's a uh, QR code and website we can go and participate. I don't know exactly how how it works, but it works, but it will be at the uh, Mountain Baptist Church on August 27th, 12 to. And I know some people that I want to recommend to be very competitive in that dessert contest. And this uh, Saturday, there's our uh, annual fundraising gala, uh, Lotus Gala at the Body Center. And I know the registration is open for that. And we support the community that nourishes the spirit of the valley. Uh, I would like to invite Rob to introduce special person. <laughs> this is this is my dad, Pastor Paul Moore. I come out with a benediction later on this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to be here. Well, let us prepare our hearts as we listen to the prelude and come together.
From heaven, God looks down and sees all humanity. But the eyes of the Lord are on those whose hope is in God. May God's unfailing love rest upon us. For we put our hope and trust in God. Our first hymn will be number 20 in the hymnal, and the words should be on the All Things Bright and Beautiful.
free as a given and we are not. This gift we will have as a God. Thanks be to God. I think we're going to get together two weeks ago talking about food. Remember, we talked about breakfast, you know, what, what your favorite food is, what you get to eat, all your favorite food. We're going to talk about food again. Even though you don't have a snack for you today, in church, we do a lot of eating together. And I remember, maybe I was a little bit older than you, we had a cookout barbecue, just like we did at the uh, Hummingbird Camp service on Sunday. And I remember we had a single box in the church backyard with a mesh, um, quickly put together a grill, and I was grilling green pepper, and I never liked green pepper, because it's bitter. Do you like it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you think about the green chili. This was in Tokyo, so we didn't have green chili. It was green pe bell pepper, I should, I should say. And I remember, surrounded by friends, family, that was ch my church, maybe I was, I just yelled out, doesn't everything taste good when we together and live together? <laughs> and I just remember that, that one thing. So I hope you remember all the good things that we get to eat at church. It's because we share it. Jesus told us to share the meal together. And we're going to, you, you, you see, Let's do that later. When Jesus had to say goodbye, he knew he was going to be gone. He wanted us to remember. And he loved us so much. He wanted every time you eat this bread and drink this grape juice, remember it's like it's me in you. So we eat together so we can enjoy ourselves, but also to remember that we are being getting good thing in our body and our heart because Jesus is with us. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you for being with us here in this space today, even though we don't see you in the body. We will remember you because you told us to remember you when we break bread together. And we thank you for all the good things we share and we can do in the church all the time. Help us build many good memories in this space. Amen. Thank you. Cheers. Unless you want to stay right here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for your heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The first scripture reading today is from Hebrews 11, uh, verses 1 to 3 and 8 to 16. I'm going to be reading from the New International <coughs> Version of the Bible. Now, faith being, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Faith, by faith, Abraham, 
when called to go to a place he later received as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country, he lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder was God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was able, enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful to us, had made the promise. And so from this one man and his and so from this one man and his as good as and he as good as did came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them from afar and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of, of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he is prepared, it has prepared a city for them. Before I read from the Gospel according to Luke, from the Bible, which my father-in-law used to call it bread, I wanted to mention that today's bread for me and has been baked by Sigi for us to share. Thank you, Sigi. Luke chapter 12, starting to 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possession and give alms. Make purchases for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in all of our hearts be pleasant and acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. What a powerful but somewhat confusing images these are. I'm curious, I'm sorry, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm curious what you really actually heard. What images stood out and what images you are left with. Sunday after Sunday, we hear passages from the Bible presented to us as today's scripture readings or even scripture lessons. 
we tend to listen to these selected passages from the scriptures as if each one of them were a self-contained unit with a nugget of message to be discovered within. Such a segment taken from the scripture is called pericope. Pericope, P-E-I-C-O-P-E, -E, pericope. I hope, well, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> While a section is carefully selected by the scholars who planned the lectionary, the original writer of the gospel never meant, to be, meant it to be a standalone lesson. It's like a TV series. Sure, you can watch an episode and enjoy it, and there's own drama, but you can understand what's going on much better when you've been watching the series from the beginning. So before digging in for that nugget of a lesson in today's pericope, let's start with where our memory is fresh. So what did we hear last week? It was in the title of my sermon, Rich Toward God. It was a story of a rich farmer who stored up abundance of crops to secure his future without a thought to help others who may be hungry now. Through this story, Jesus called out our anxiety and the human tendency to grasp for things that we think will preserve our lives, but in reality, don't. With the story, Jesus shows us how our anxiety and worry would detract us from living an abundant life God has for us. And he invites us to be rich toward God instead, loosening a tight grip on our lives and offering ourselves to God, who is already at work to give us rich life. But it's so hard and scary to let go of our own survival toolkit when we know how this world works, whether it's the way we manage our money or the way we navigate through our relationship, through our work, at home, even at church. Rather than love and give with abundance, we are on guard. We will not be fooled. That's what fear does to us. So, today's pericope starts with these words of assurance. Do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus says God has already, has always, has decided and has always wanted to give God's kingdom where God's love, mercy, and justice rule to those whom Jesus called little flock. The ones committed to learning and following God's way of love, mercy, and justice rather than the ways of the world. God's self out of love sent God's beloved son to show the world that way, Jesus himself being the way, though only a few will follow. If we count ourselves among that little flock, the reign of God where we all uh, reach toward God, that's what's coming. We have Jesus' word for it. And here's the rub. To receive God's kingdom, to enjoy it as ours, is at the same time to live into that very way of God, freely giving ourselves and our gifts in service of others. So no one lacks anything and everyone's heart is full of compassion and mercy, which is what God treasures above all. When we look around the world, however, we see that we are not quite there yet. Although we see glimpses of God's reign in moment of grace, if we are really paying attention, letting us know it is there. So our dilemma is, we have this promise of God that we will inherit the kingdom of God while we wake up every morning in a world that goes by different playbooks. We wake up to see the world bleeding to death, starving to death, 
or suffering through scorching heat or overwhelming flood. Somehow, all of it related to the ways its inhabitants have chosen to live. How can we carry on as those who inherit the kingdom of God while all this is going on? What are we to do in the meantime? The little flock of Jesus is not the first ones to live on the promise of God. God who sent Jesus to us is the God of Abraham who made a covenant with him. The other scripture reading this morning from Hebrews that Father read to us reminds us God promised Abraham that he would inherit a land that was promised to him, but he never came to possess it during his life. But Abraham had faith that allowed him to understand God's promise is the ultimate reality, even when it is not apparent to our eyes. Abraham's faith was the faith that was the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And this faith made him obedient and allowed him to actually follow God wherever he was led, even when he did not know exactly where he was going. And that with assurance and in hope. His faith gave him the conviction that what God promised him was already his. Even when he did not possess it, he lived as a stranger in a foreign land. In the meantime, Abraham lived by faith, in hope, trusting the promise made by God, whom he knew to be faithful. In the meantime, faith. Like Abraham's, our life is a pilgrimage that happens in the meantime, between the promised kingdom of God when we live in the unity of the divine love and the immediate reality of this beautiful but dangerous world. By faith, we have assurance that God promised us what God promised us is our reality. And in hope, we lean on that promise to live in this world following God's way. In the meantime, I was reminded of this beautiful wedding vows I recently had the pleasure and honor of reading. In mutual love and trust, noble promises were made of what they shall remain to each other so long as they both shall live. It is to, that, to those vows that they will return when the hardships come to keep faith in each other to keep on loving each other in this beautiful and dangerous world. Our life is pilgrimage along the long arc of the moral universe that bends towards justice, as Dr. King said. And in that meantime, we live by faith. We just don't wait, we live. Following the way of God in the reign of God, Pursuing peace in times of war, bringing healing where there is suffering, working towards restoration where there's been destruction without losing hope. And that's being alert, alert and watchful. To keep hope and live by faith, continuing in the ways of God's kingdom, even when the world all around us is going haywire. Coming back to the Luke's passage, Jesus says, and he seems to be jumping from reassuring world, word to the little flock, to, not to be afraid, to commanding them to be ever so watchful and alert and ready. He continues, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that when they, they may open the door for him, as soon as he comes and knocks. But this command for watchfulness is not a command to be on the edge of one's seat all the time. If one does not lose hope and keep living by faith, 
one is ever ready to receive God's reign. So this urgent call to be ready at all times is really encouragement to not to lose hope and not to give up living into the way of God, even when the world shows no sign of turning around in repentance. Keeping faith in the meantime, what does that look like? In a broken and suffering world, we keep on loving our neighbor. We keep on loving our God as if the reign of God depends on it. What does it look like in your life? What does it look like for the life of the church? To keep working for the cause you believe is helping the world to be a better place, even when we don't see immediate results. To keep engaging with the life of the community practicing love, mercy, and justice, to keep engaging the long arc of the moral just universe so that it would bend a bit more towards justice. Yesterday, August 6th, was the 77th anniversary of an atomic bomb dropped in Hiroshima. And this week then, on Nagasaki on August 9th, and Japan surrendered on August 15, 1945, ending the World War II. As you know, the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy committed countless unspeakable atrocities before and during the war. My mother used to tell me how happy she was as a girl of nine years to learn that the war was over because she could go home to her family. I was born 20 years after the war. And I remember hearing this popular song growing up in Japan. I'll spare you my singing, but the word <laughs> says in my translation, we were born after the war. We grew up without knowing words. We are adults now about to start walking on with songs of peace on our lips. We want you to remember our name. We are the children who know no words. When this song came out in 1970, this was not the case in the world, nor has it ever been. When we look, when we remember from heaven, God sees all humanity. Well, what is our to do in the meantime? I would like to share a glimpse of that from a, the from a life of a young woman, Nicole, a uh, poem that was inspired by her former father-in-law, Frank Casanova. The, wall, the, it's, the poem is called, In the Meantime. The walls close in, the pressure great, the feel like icy fingers great, and then the word comes in like rain. His grace will get you through this pain. In the meantime, Lord, the path unclear. In the meantime, Lord, you are still so near. In the meantime, Lord, I won't choose fear, for fear is not of you. In the meantime, Lord, you hold me tight. In the meantime, Lord, you bring me light. In the meantime, Lord, on through this night, each day, your verse is new. In the meantime, Lord, your truth remains. In the meantime, Lord, you, you, you keep me sane. In the meantime, Lord, you're still the same, divine in all you do. It's only due to you I smile this child through. Equal in the words of the psalmist, I'll conclude with the Psalm for the day, Psalm 33, verses 12 to 22. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. 
From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashioned the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us even as we hope in you. May it be so. Let us now sing in response to the word, hymn number 724, Oh Jesus, I have promised. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We treasure all of the ways we can worship and serve together. 
of Christ and Christ's name. Let us return to God our offerings and our intentions to, to further Christ's work in compassionate and creative ways. <laughs> sends us out into the world to proclaim the good news, we are like land among the sheep, among the wolves. But the power and authority comes from the God, the ruler of the universe. When we are at our most vulnerable, most open, by emptying ourselves, we allow the Holy Spirit to pour into us so that we are employed, be sent, be the body of Christ in the world. The ultimate example of this emptying was set by Jesus, who showed us with his life, the kingdom of God was at hand. In the Holy Communion, Christ becomes present in our life today. We come to the Lord's table to receive Christ who poured himself out for us, so that we can be strengthened and nourished to pour ourselves out for the sake of the world. Here, 
At this table, the spirit is poured out on the simple gifts of the bread and the cup, and on all gathered in these moments. In the bread that is broken, we are given the strength to comfort those who mourn, to unite families torn apart by fears, to build bridges of collaboration with all people of goodwill. In the cup poured out and offered to us, we are given the courage to, to focus on what God is doing, not our perceived limitations, to open the faucets of grace, to flood the streets of hostility and division, to share everything given to us with those who have lost all that they have. And when we discover God's community at the end of all time and history, we will join our sisters and brothers in lifting a joyful praise to you, O God, only in one, as we are seated around the table of hope, served by your love, grace, and peace. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, and do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup, said, this is a cup of new covenant, shed in my seal, in my blood, shed for you for forgiveness of sins. Drink it all of it. Do this in remembrance of me. So every time we take, we eat this bread and take this cup, we proclaim the saving death of Jesus Christ until he comes. These are the gift of God for the people of God.
Gracious, merciful God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, empowering us to share the good news with people in every corner of the world that your kingdom is at hand. Amen. And we continue in our prayer. As people brought together as a church in this corner of this world, with thanksgiving, with, we lift up our joy and concerns before you in our prayer. You are invited to share your joy and concern with the congregation who will respond in lifting up your prayer by saying, Lord, hear our prayer. When? Servant and along with the thought of nuclear weapons, I pray for the evolution of that which can destroy creation. Yes, <clears throat> we live in a difficult world, we face difficulty every day. Let us pray for the wisdom, Lord. For my friend Pat Harvey, who just passed away, please pray for his family. Lord, 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 Lord hear our prayers. Uh, for my son Giles, who's out of work at the moment. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Lord, 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 hear our prayers. Ivy, who we have some important decisions to make. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Thanksgiving for Rob and his partner. Lord, hear our prayers. Remembering all those who are on the road traveling. Lord, for the medical procedure at the end of the month. We offer these prayers together with those that are in our hearts, too deep for words, we pray for the leaders of this nation and the nations of the world. Guide them to choose peace and care for the well-being of all people. And we pray that they do not lose hope, keep the faith, and be at their task. And with your spirit guiding, we offer these prayer, our prayers with the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but to the us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join our voices in the sending him by 817. We walk by faith, not by sight. <laughs> Oh, 
Peace of Christ. <laughs> Thank you. 